Counter-Strike 2 looks really bright and glowy, thanks to Source 2's bouncier lighting. Compared with what we're used to seeing in CSGO, this can sometimes look very over the top. Perhaps it's too bright and colourful and glowy, but there's only one way to know for sure. Well, actually, I'm sure there's many, but what I'm going to do is to return to the original Counter-Strike maps and to see what they might look like if lit using modern techniques. How, you ask? Like this. Half-Life has been blessed with ray tracing, courtesy of the XASH RT project. But in a way, so has Counter-Strike. Because if I copy and paste the whole of Counter-Strike into Half-Life's folder, then delete anything called MOTD, then I can explore all of these maps as well, toggling ray tracing on and off with the press of a button. So how is it? Surprisingly subtle and a bit buggy. I mean, it's not subtle, the whole place changes colour and the old blocky shadows are swapped out for soft looking proper ones. But it goes to show that there's a lot more to making a map look good than simply to give it ray tracing. The materials also need updating with all of their sheen and bumpy properties, else they remain looking flat and pixelated. And it is very buggy, in that if I move about, shadows jump in and out of existence and spinning quickly takes it all by surprise. But it's hard to blame it, when like I said, I literally pasted Counter-Strike into Half-Life's heart and expected it to perform. And if I move back to Half-Life's ray traced implementation, then you can see very few bugs in comparison. So before we get stuck in with this ray tracing, let's go through how all the existing Counter-Strikes have done their lighting and shadows. And I'm going to warn you now, doing this will ruin these games' shadows for you forevermore. With the original Half-Life and Counter-Strike, all lighting was baked in, meaning it was pre-calculated long before you even loaded the map up. If a map had a flickering light or a light switch you could toggle on and off, it would have to remember two versions of lighting for every bit of the map that was affected by that lighting change. So while you could have toggleable lights in that game, it quickly bloated the size of the map file and there were strict limits on how many variations there could be in each particular area. With early Source games like Counter-Strike Source, it still used that same baked-in lighting method, but added real-time shadows over the top of this, which it gave to any movable object in the level. But rather than being awesome, these were deeply flawed in so many ways that they were probably worse than having nothing at all. For instance, these shadows would overlap each other in an unconvincing way and would blob through solid surfaces. And as these shadows merely mimicked the sun's lighting, it meant that in any indoor scene, the shadows were almost guaranteed to be pointing the wrong way and would look stupid. CSGO actually did away with this feature. Now when you're indoors, nothing has a shadow. Not even dropped weapons and stuff that you'd swear did have a shadow before you watched this video. No, CSGO still relies on pre-baked lighting for all the indoor areas, which at best will add a dark blob beneath things in order to make it look like they have a shadow. Ultimately, it's still using the exact same technique that the original Counter-Strike did to light its indoor areas, but obviously at a high resolution. But there's one new feature that CSGO does introduce that is really good, and that's its Cascade Shadow Maps. This is used to mimic the sunlight in the levels, and that's why whenever you're outdoors in CSGO you'll see crisp, clear shadows on everything, right down to tiny details like the leaves on trees and on dangling cables. There's a lot wrong with Cascade Shadow Maps, but it at least gets the direction of the sunlight correct and looks better than the baked in lighting that it replaces. You can see as I zoom out that the quality of these shadows decreases until they eventually fade out completely, at which point they're replaced with ultra low quality baked in shadows, similar to the ones that you see in CS 1.6. And Counter-Strike 2 does its lighting in exactly the same way as CSGO does, but it calculates so many more light bounces into such a high quality that it may as well be a ray-traced version of CSGO, only pre-calculated. And to simulate all those indoor shadows that CSGO was completely missing, it uses ambient occlusion to try and darken up things that are close to other things, a feature I feel I've gushed about enough in other videos of mine already. So yeah, CS2 does a good job with lighting, but it cheats with all of it but your frame rate will be all the higher for it, so yay. But now for the actual point of this video, which is to see how close to CS2's lighting we get by ray tracing in 1.6. Or are we seeing how close to 1.6's ray trace lighting we can get in CS2? Hmm, makes sense for us to start with Dust2 being the only Source 2 map we have access to, some of us at least. Now, I think the question that's been on all our minds is, can Dust2 really be as glowy as Counter-Strike 2 thinks it should be? And what fairer way to do this than to put an image of CSGO on one side, of CS2 on the other, and then to put a picture of 1.6 in the middle but with ray tracing enabled, to see what that looks like? Okay, maybe CS2 was being conservative with how much light glow Dust2 could be getting. No doubt helped by an extremely bright sun and saturated yellow textures, the 1.6 version of the map blasts light through both sides of CT spawn, basking the whole place in a warm glow using nothing but the power of the sun. And while Counter-Strike 2's version is also very warm and glowy, most of the light seems to start from within, emitting from artificial light sources in CT spawn. 
I tried this spot as well, and again, boom. There might as well be a nuke going off outside in the 1.6 version of this map. So next time you complain that CS2 looks too bright and glowy, just remember, it could always be brighter and glowier. And last is Down Suicide, which is the one time the ray traced version seems to look more like CSGO than it does CS2. Possibly because the indoor area is narrower and longer in 1.6, making it darker. But it's nice to know that there is a limit to how far the sun's light in 1.6 can reach. And this is it. Italy in Counter-Strike 2 is what happens if you wash your colours with your whites and everything comes out a reddy yellowy colour. It's burningly bright and saturated, even on the white surfaces. It's as if everything's freshly painted and all the colours are bleeding into each other. I think you get the idea. Let's see what happens if we enable ray tracing in the 1.6 version. Oh hey, everything turns reddish here as well. And the shaded areas are purpley colour, which is made from the warm shades of the environment and sun mixing with the bluer colours of the sky. It's striking just how different the result is from the game's original, very yellowy look, where ray tracing not on, and really makes me wonder how well 1.6's lighting could have aged had it managed to capture this degree of ambient lighting as well. Maps would probably have taken about a year to render, but that's somebody else's problem, isn't it? Remember this clip from Counter-Strike 2's teasers? 1.6's spot doesn't have colours that even remotely match that. But if I enable ray tracing and turn down the saturation to compensate for the colourfulness of the textures, and you've practically got a 1.6 era version of this Counter-Strike 2 map. Lighting looks eerily similar. It's just a shame the lighting has changed direction. Indeed, I noticed this with many 1.6 maps once I enabled ray tracing. The sun's angle changes for no good reason, and I don't know how to stop it. I even downloaded a bunch of CSGO inspired maps that some very good mappers had attempted to cram into 1.6's engine and they've done a staggering job with these. But unfortunately, ray tracing fails to pick up the same sun's angles on these as well, and it ends up lighting these maps completely differently, ruling out any chance of comparing like for like. So we'll just have to pick up on individual elements and compare those instead. This green awning on Mirage, for example. In the CS2 trailer, it gives everything beneath it a greenish hue, and the grass in 1.6, being almost food colouring green in colour, does the same to all around it as well. D-Truth, an old and rather beautiful map, shows this brilliantly on the statue just here. The ray traced shadows also give him some angry looking eyebrows, but look at how the green from the grass radiates up onto the statue. It's no longer just a prop that's in the level, it's grounded within this location. Also, what a beautiful map, visually ahead of its time. It's just a shame Counter-Strike lost the truth somewhere along the way. Tides shows another great example of this green washing around grassy areas. I always thought this was one of the better looking Counter-Strike maps, but even it can't compensate for 1.6's flat lighting, which when ray traced, becomes warm and glowy. Look at these stone pillar thingies. The undersides reflect the green from the grass, and the bits facing upwards are coloured by the sky. It's a lovely touch that I hope Counter-Strike 2's lighting can recreate to some extent. And then I've sung great praise for how Counter-Strike 2 nicely shades down the backs of things, or in the small crack between two crates and the like, and the ray tracing in 1.6 manages the same thing on stuff like the crates and barrels of dust too. Look at these examples. Lovely. Imagine how blown away you'd be if you saw this in action 22 years ago. You probably weren't even born then, were you? I haven't talked much about interiors because, frankly, they don't tend to look better with ray tracing in this game, since the interior lighting has been placed and configured to look okay in 1.6, using 1.6's engine and lighting and stuff. And those same settings and colours don't tend to work too well in real life, so I find ray tracing works against these areas, tending to make them too dark or too colourful or way too grainy. But I wanted to show you off this. First cut, oh, reflective windows, we'll never get old. Awesome to shatter too. But there's one last thing too, not really to do with lighting in the slightest. I forgot this bit of office used to look like this. Can we have this back again please Val? A beautiful view over a frozen lake, bet it could look great in Source 2. And yeah, Counter-Strike 2 might have ambient occlusion, but my character's orange clothing here makes whatever she steps on glow orange. I'd like to see you add that to your latest game, Valve. And you can see how messed up the sun's lighting is, appearing to come from sunset angle whilst appearing cold blue. Like I said at the beginning, don't be too tough on the bug scene in this video. I'm using a ray tracing plugin that's been optimised for the Half-Life maps. And these look great, remaining stylistically faithful to the original versions, and they don't display any of the flickering or shimmering scene in these Counter-Strike maps that I've been showing, since I just threw them in and hoped that ray tracing would do okay with them. So I'm sure that these Counter-Strike levels could also be bug-free if modified with this use case in mind. And please don't take anything in this video too seriously. It is all just a bit of fun, and I don't really want everywhere in Counter-Strike to look like an Instagram filter, or for it to run at like 3 FPS for most people. But I'll end with a scene from Half-Life 1 which I think shows the true potential of ray tracing, and I fear we'll not see its kind in Counter-Strike 2 until it too gets support for ray tracing. Or plain our reflections. Have fun. Okay.